Hey, good afternoon. So one of this week's assignments is a still life drawing, and you're going to be drawing from a still life setup here in the room. And here's a black and white photograph of the setup. It's over here off to my left side. And you can see it's pretty much just an assemblage of pottery. And this would be a piece, a textile piece from Guatemala. And this is only seen from one side, okay? There's another side that might have some additional detail. So one thing you're gonna do with your still life setup before you begin to draw, you're gonna take one of these red viewfinders and the viewfinder, the proportions, height to width are exactly the same as your drawing paper. And your drawing paper is this size. This is better quality 80 pound paper. You can see I've already started to block out some of my chosen area for drawing. And the viewfinder then, as you move around the still life setup and as you come in and go out, the viewfinder allows you to find your best view for drawing purposes. Very much like taking a photograph with a camera, even your cell phone, you look through a viewfinder and compose that way. Don't try to do the whole setup, okay? Use your viewfinder, the one I just showed you, to zero in on what you want to do. You can work vertically or you can work horizontally, okay? It doesn't really matter to me. So let's look at some other photographs here. I've taken in order to have a reference. Now, you won't be able to do this because I'm not going to print them out for you, but for the purposes of making this video, I took these photographs and printed them out on my black and white printer. And you can see here's a close-up using my viewfinder, and it shows two of the upside-down cups stacked over here on the left, an edge of the cart used to set up the still life. There's part of the handle of the cart, and this is portion of that textile. Textile just means fabric, okay? And it looks like that's the base of maybe a vase or something else, I'm not really sure. So does that excite me? Not really, but sometimes the folds of fabric and the design on fabric and the contrast of the texture of the fabric with other services is kind of neat. But would I pick that one? Probably not. Now, this is backing out a ways and seeing a bit more of the uh, larger setup. So I have the vase, I have a cup over here, two cups over here looking like they're the same, some kind of dish right there, and then more of the textile. This is a cool area right there for me. I wouldn't mind doing that. Would I do the whole thing? Probably not. I'd probably zero in on this area right here, okay? So this is all about you having a sense of design. Here's an even more extreme close-up of that same area. Still two cups over here on your left, but very little bit seen. More focus on this larger of the two vases and more concentration down here, more emphasis on that area of folding and the fabric down at the bottom. Interesting, it's okay. I don't know that I'm crazy about it. I'm not sure that I'm crazy about anything I've seen so far. Something to mention here, the camera, the phone that I used in portrait mode fades things out or fuzzes things out in the background. And that might be something that you'll wanna do when you're drawing is provide greater detail, greater accuracy in the foreground objects and let those objects in the background that are less important not have quite as much detail. Now that's an option because your eyes can focus on these if you want and draw them in high detail as well, okay? But you don't have to. Here's yet another area, a drawing from that same area. Here's still another. I'm kind of liking all these reflections on this teapot. Now notice the angle of this is looking down. So I'm seeing inside some of these things. If you're seated, I don't know that you're gonna have this viewpoint, but if you wish to stand and begin some sketching that way, you can. Here's some really interesting glaze flow on the side, contrasted with the texture of the fringe here on that piece of fabric, kinda neat. Now remember, these are black and white uh, photographs that you're looking at. You're gonna see the real thing, of course, in color. Uh, you decide if you want to draw in color or in black and white. I'm going to be demonstrating in black and white only using this ebony pencil, this Prismacolor ebony pencil. Now, let's take a look at this one. Uh, I kind of like it. I like the fuzzed out area here. In color, this is a really interesting area. In black and white, not so much. If I were to do this in color, I think, and I, ha I would think I would maybe choose this photograph um, sitting in front of this area, seeing it in color, I could do that. Uh, but right here, using this to judge by this area doesn't seem nearly as interesting. 
So this may be the one that I picked. There's one more back here. The background's very fuzzy. I'm not sure I like it. I like the diagonal lines though. So this might be the viewpoint that I pick. And so looking at it through my viewfinder to kind of establish where things are gonna be within the picture, you can see I'm working vertically however, now, right now. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the uh, underdrawing of this. Now the underdrawing is always light. You can easily do it in a number two pencil. I'm not going to finish this drawing. I'm only going to block it out in, in light lines and then I'm going to make one more video where I make a little more progress with ranges of value to make these objects look 3D. One thing you might want to pay attention to, the angles, the lengths of the line, okay? Do they have to be perfect? No. Do they need to be relatively correct? Probably, yes. I'm even going to look over here at this photograph as I'm drawing. It's the only reference I have right now, sitting at the table with the camera up above. So I don't actually have um, the still life to look at. I see glaze flow there. I'm gonna draw lightly. I see another glaze flow right there coming up. There's this shape right here that's created. I might have drawn it a little bigger. Seems like that intersection point should be pulled back again a little bit. So I can make these corrections as I go along. And then of course erasers later on for making additional changes. Notice that I'm paying attention to the negative spaces like this, green, this area right here, which is green glaze. That's a negative space. The white lines would be the positive spaces. The black lines would be the positive spaces. This looks a bit like a plant. Okay, and I'm just roughing this out, just getting a general sense of direction and movement and size. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do for that right now. I see this teacup here. I see the division of glazes right there. I see this medallion right here. I see a little bit of a plant-like uh, feature right there that has some um, uh, flowers or seeds up at the top, a little bit of a curve to the edge. There's this negative space here. Okay, see it right there, that negative space. This distance here, this distance here. Over here, I see vertical lines. So I see these vertical lines right here. One, two, three. They're part of this face over here. And I see right above the lip of the cup, right about there, I see the top of this distant vase entering the picture. There might be a slight curve to it. It comes down right about there with this much distance as I see it here, okay? Now those vertical lines I'll go back and do better later on. Down here, now let me, I'm using this point for a reference. Down here, I see another edge of the vase where light, see where light and shadow meet right there. And then just beneath that, I see an, a little bit of the textile coming into the picture two angle lines like that and here again coming in from the side of the page an edge a rounded edge an oval edge of a cup lower down it's kind of out of focus that's fine it's pretty much the same shape as we have right there and you don't see a lot of it you see just a little bit of it both the darker glaze on top the lighter glaze on the very very bottom and that little sliver of medallion right there so is this perfect so far no of course not it's not perfect at all but am I getting a general sense? You betcha. Now I see a curving pattern in the textile there. I see another line there. I see this forming. See this right here? That little stripe. A bit like making your own puzzle. I'm gonna go ahead and darken that. Do you have to do that? No. But if you think that little darker stripe is gonna to help to hold the structure over here as you draw, go ahead and put it in there. I see angle lines here. There's that corner, but it gets part of the vase turned over on its side, but it gets partially covered by this. What is this? Well, that's some fringe. And that's a lot of texture right there to, to work with. So I'm not gonna mess with that right now, other than to put in a general line to show where it is. I see this triangle right here, okay? So I'm dealing with pretty basic. I see this very skinny triangle right here. See it there, that's fold. I see some wavering or waving of the line there. I see another line there. This is part of the cart. May have drawn a little too much of that, but that's okay. 
And so you can see I've structured this whole bottom portion, left portion, really pretty quickly. Let's go over here to this little black teapot. Now, one thing I want to notice, I'm going to focus on this negative space here, right here between the cup and the pot. I want to make sure and get that right. So here I see a little bit of the spout. Here's the bulging side of the teapot. Here's the base of the teapot. Let's figure out what that base is. Well, it's a little bit coming in from the side here, very close to the edge of this pot beneath it. And I see, let's see, just draw lightly. See this bulging curve right there. And here comes a little bit of the spout and the spout is right about there. Mm, let me see, is that about right? You notice how I compare to my, my picture here. So this drawing from life is tricky because you really have to jump back and forth between your drawing and the thing that you're seeing. And does it have to be a perfect no? Now, one problem I'm running into here, you see how the top of the teapot here is cut off by the, um, the frame of the, of the phone, and yet I have more paper here to fill. So I'm just gonna pretend like I can see that whole uh, little top to that teapot right there, and I'm gonna go with that. Let me finish this, and I'm not dealing with any of the reflections yet, but those can come later. And you can see how this is basically blocked out. I think I can e even see my reflection right over here. Okay, let's make sure that this gets completed like that, kind of. There's gonna be some corrections to do right there. So this is blocked out. I'm ready to go, go back and do this uh, in greater detail with lights and darks and continuous tone shading so these objects look more real, more 3D. Haven't gotten there yet, but you've seen the initial steps. Getting started with the viewfinder on the still life, focusing on an area that you like, and then blocking it out super lightly on 80 pound drawing paper. First of two videos, get this far, and then queue up the second video. Now, you try.